Hi, in this video I want to discuss the central limit theorem with you. Um, the central limit theorem says that if a simple random sample of size n is greater than or equal to 30 is drawn from any population, this means that it could be something that's skewed to the left, skewed to the right, um, it could be symmetric, it could be any single population. If you have a sample size n greater than or equal to 30, um, with a certain mean mu and standard deviation sigma, or if you already are starting with a normally distributed population, then you can use any size of n. The sampling distribution of the sample mean, so that's saying that if I were to take samples of, let's say, size 25, and it was from a normally distributed population, and then I took a sample of 25 and I found the average of that sample if I were to continue doing this infinitely, I continue to take samples of size 25 or the same size over and over and over again, the distribution of the sample means or the sampling distribution is going to become approximately normal with the mean, and I know that this notation looks scary, this is saying that it's the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means is how you read this. It's just saying that the mean of all of our sample means is going to approach the mean of the population. And the, and I didn't write it out, this is the population, or sigma, remember, is our population standard deviation. Um, to find this, it's known as the standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution sigma sub x bar, so this is saying on average how much each of our sample means differs from our population mean. And it is found by taking the population mean and dividing by the square root of the sample size. So for this, I wanted to show you guys a couple of simulations with this. Um, I am using rossmanchance.com, and so I wanted to simulate um, what's happening with this. What I want you to pay attention to is the mean. Um, for this distribution, basically what it's saying is that this population size has 18,000 different values in it. Okay, um, the mean of this population is 8.001. The standard deviation is 1.510. And for this, we can see that the distribution is approximately normally distributed. So for this one, it doesn't matter what size of sample we take since we are starting with an approximately normally distributed data set. So I'm just going to take a data set of size 10, and then I will show you that what happens with the sample size as it increases. So right now it says I'm just going to take one sample. So if I draw a sample, it randomly selected 10 points from this distribution. And then it found the average of this with the standard deviation for that specific sample. So for this over here, it shows us that what the running mean total is for the entire distribution. So if I draw another, let's just draw another sample so that we can see this time our sample mean was 7.85. I'm just going to go up to 5 so that you can see what the computer is doing. So now we took another random sample of 10, and then it found the mean of these to be 8.4. There's going to be a lot more variability when you're dealing with a smaller sample size. Um, I'm going to just draw one more so that you can see. We drew five different samples. All five of them ended up with very different means. Um, but what we're going to look at is the overall mean. The overall mean is 8.220. So this one had a mean of 8.575. As we continue to do this more and more times, um, the mean will approach the population mean. And the standard deviation, if we took this population standard deviation and divided it by the square root of 10, that would give us this value over here. So that's what this is going to approach. So because I have a computer and I can take a lot more samples, I'm going to jump up to 100 samples. So what it's doing is it randomly is selecting 100 different samples, and then it put it over here. If you notice, it's not very normally distributed right now, and that's because we're dealing with a smaller sample size of size 10. I will increase the sample size here in just a second so that you can see. Um, 
So let's increase this by 100 at a time. And I'm just going to quickly get up to, um, actually, let's just bump this up to 1,000 really quickly so that you can see what's happening with our shapes. Okay, so I just drew 900. And now look at this. It's starting to approach the normal curve. So this is the central limit theorem in action. It's showing you that um, as you take values, it's going to approach the normal curve. The larger the sample size is, the quicker this is going to happen, and the smaller the standard error is going to be. So I'm just going to go up to, um, I'm going to quickly get up to, if you notice our running total, it says our normal, um, uh, the number of samples is 2,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly bring it up to like 20,000. So if I continue to do this over and over and over again, Okay, I'm now up to 17,000, and you can see that the normal distribution, it's very, very close to the normal distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and overlay the normal distribution, and you can see how nicely that fits in there. And this is useful for so many different things. I'm going to start over with a larger sample size so that you can see that we have, if we have a larger sample size, it's going to get there much more quickly. And if you notice, this standard deviation will go down because it's saying on average how much each of our samples differ from the sample mean. So now I'm going to draw samples. Um, it's going to draw samples of size 100 with 1,000 of them at a time. So if you notice, at 1,000, we're almost to the normal curve. And if I continue to draw this, because it's taking 100, it does take the computer a little bit longer to compute. Um, it's not as quick as the last one, but as I continue to do this, the sample mean is going to get closer. Notice it's 7.998, which is really close to 8.001. And with this one, with a sample size 100, the square root of 100 is 10. So if I divide this 1.51, it should be getting closer to 0.15, which you notice that just at 3,000, it's already done. Okay, so this one, it's not as hard to see because, or is easy to, like, fall, sorry, it's not as hard to visualize because we're already starting with something that looks like this. So now let's look at a different population. Okay, I'm going to look at a population. This one is seriously skewed to the right. Because this one is skewed to the right, I have to use a sample size of minimum of 30. Since it's so skewed to the right, it's going to be better to have a larger sample size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do sample size 100, and I'm just going to draw one sample so that you can see what it's doing. So it's selected 100 points from here. It found the mean. The mean for this one is 8.99. The standard deviation is 1.501. So like I said, as I continue to take samples, the mean of my sampling distribution of the sample means, so all of my means that I gathered, and the standard deviation, um, so the mean of the sample means should approach the mean of the population, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution or the standard error should also approach um, this value divided by the square root of our sample size. So I'm just going to bump this up to taking 100 at a time. And if you notice with that normal model, at first it's not great. It's The central limit theorem is saying that the more times you take this, if you take it an infinite number of times, that's when it's going to approach. And it just takes my computer a couple minutes because remember, it's randomly selecting a hundred of these and then finding the mean of that and then doing that a thousand times. Okay, but if you notice, but just at 3,000 by having a sample size of 100, this is getting very, very close to the original population mean. So let me just go back and recap. Central limit theorem is telling you that if a simple random sample of size n greater than or, th greater than or equal to 30 is drawn from any population with a mean of a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, or if you take it from a normally distributed population of any size, the sampling distribution of the sample mean, the mu sub x bar, is going to approach the population mean. And the standard deviation or the standard error of the sampling distribution is going to approach the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Hopefully that helped clear up the central limit theorem for you. As always, thanks for watching.